Thank you for checking out crypto.chartguys.com, the source for technical analysis in the cryptocurrency world. We are proud to announce our own crypto alert system designed to give you the most critical technical trading information possible no matter where you are. Keep your eyes on the market with mobile or email alerts for MACD crosses, RSI levels, and even inside bar alerts for dozens of coins across multiple exchanges. New features and proprietary chart guys indicators are already in development. Our alert system is very easy to customize and utilize, so don't hesitate to sign up for the most effective crypto trading tool on the market at crypto.chartguys.com. Hello everyone, checking in on the big three and we're going to stick with BNB because BNB has seen a pretty strong breakout here. But the last couple days are going pretty much as we expected. Now, if you go back and watch the last three days, you'll see that it's it's doing what we were looking for. But you'll notice that there's not we're not saying this is going to happen or we're not saying on the second day of the pullback, we're going to hit our higher low. We're not that specific. We're reacting to the information as we get it. We know generally what is most likely to happen because of the little details, because we broke the lower highs. We were looking for the higher low and looking for that bull flag of healthy consolidation. So we know the odds of what's most likely to happen. And so then we look for the little clues that can lead to furthering the odds of that playing out. So that's essentially what we have happening here. Our higher low on the daily is set. And if this level breaks for now, that's going to be a red flag. And that'll be a red flag that this daily bounce is not doing what we are anticipating and not going to see a whole lot of short-term strength looking back for a higher high. So at this point, the bulls will not settle for anything less than a higher high on the daily time frame getting over the high of the bounce at this point, which is 9,174. And if we get that, our weekly equilibrium pattern is going to be looking that much better. And this is one we've been talking about for quite a while now, where we're looking for this move to the upper 9,000 range to get into the middle of this equilibrium pattern and then look for it to continue to tighten up until later April when we will be looking for a break. And I also would not be surprised if that were to happen that we would have some news interestingly timed right for when we break that weekly equilibrium so that's where we stand on the daily time frame and we're going to be looking for continuation and so far we got a good sign of it bull mac decross and again four hour time frame has been giving us a nice clue in terms of turning around momentum same thing that the daily did just like the daily broke the lower highs we look for a higher low the four hour time frame did that last night as well i entered a btc trade yesterday i'll go over that on the shorter term time frames so we have a new support level a higher low that's at 8,666, and we're looking to see a break of 9,000 psychological, which has rejected the price this morning, and then the top 9,140 or 74. If we break that $9,000 level, the odds that we break 9,174 increase significantly. So that would be potentially worth holding out for if we see some nice bull volume behind a 9,000 break. So I'm currently all cash, and when I made my entry yesterday, it was on healthy hourly consolidation is what I was using. So I was using this hourly move. And again, what is the same pattern? Exactly what we're looking for on the daily, exactly what we got on the four hour. It was a lower high and lower low pattern on the hourly. It broke the lower highs, a significant bull move with some solid volume behind it. And then we started forming this bull flag pattern. And I said, okay, we broke the lower highs. We're looking for our higher low to form. I entered a position on this consolidation and it was a pretty low risk trade. I said, all right, if we break the low of this consolidation, I'm going to exit. This is me entering right here on this candlestick and then held it overnight. We saw the bull break. I exited a third of my position into strength on the ask on, on this move because it was a solid short move or a short term move. Got those gains real quick. Wanted to lock some of that in. And then when we lost this hourly higher low, I anticipated that we were likely going to lose this level. And that's because at that point, I looked at the four hour time frame and said, okay, we're pretty extended. We've seen this four hour bull move. We need to see a little consolidation. We had just formed a bearish reversal candlestick on the four hour. I said, this four hour needs a higher low because we broke the lower highs. So we're likely to lose the hourly higher lows to see that four hour higher low established. And again, I know higher, low, lower, high, it all can be confusing, but once you get it, I'm speaking perfect English to a lot of people and they're understanding every single word that I'm saying. So stick with it because once it clicks, it will click and the entire world will open up before your eyes. So I exited on this break of this tightening pattern. We had a, an equilibrium on the hourly. It broke bearish. I exited. No rush to get back in. We're right around 
you know, where I was taking my initial profit. So at this point, I'm watching to see, can we break 9,000? And perhaps I'll get in on the 9,000 move. And uh, it all depends when it happens. And to be perfectly honest, like I said, when cryptocurrency was on fire and I was trading it May through January, I was shaping my life around trading cryptocurrency. And now I'm shaping trading cryptocurrency around my life. I'm not you know, the opportunity is not as insane and I'm not sitting here on my computer for 14 hours trying to capture all of these trades. If it happens, it happens. If I'm not around when it happens, I'll get the next one. So now we have a higher low on the hourly. We can be watching 8,860 and the tightest range is 8,860 and 9,000. That's the range we're in right now. And how we break is likely going to determine where we are headed into the next six hours, 12 hours or so. And I'm just thinking overnight here on the East Coast. So over the next 12 hours could be dictated with which direction we break this tightening range. So that's where we stand on Bitcoin, Ethereum, a little bit different, but still very similar. Again, the weakest name, there's no doubt about it. It's very clear. We have our higher low on the daily time frame. That's our must hold level. If these higher lows break that Bitcoin and Ethereum just formed back to Bitcoin here, then we're going to be looking back down towards our lows. And that's obviously a big setback for this bounce. So Ethereum support is 507.84 and the resistance is at the top of the bounce, 589.75. We still have a long way to go, about 8% before the bulls get up to that resistance level. So here's the four hour time frame. We broke the lower highs, not as convincingly. This was a lower high level that I was watching that we did. You can see it's still resistance, even though we did get above it. We topped out here at 543.87 topped out at 543.62, take it over by a couple dollars, but that's still a resistance level. So it's not clear in terms of the strength and four hour support level is now 526. So 526 support, 546 resistance is essentially the range that we're watching here for Ethereum as we head into overnight. And again, the, the setup is a lot worse. It's just, it's the daily time frame. The exponential resistances haven't even been tested. The four hour time frame. It's just not as bullish, bottom line. So again, I don't try and find this to be a laggard unless things are getting extremely oversold on the daily time frame and on that ETH BTC. Let's try and pull that up real quick. ETH BTC. So let's see how this chart looks. We know it's not going to look good, but let's see how oversold it is. So the daily RSI down at 20. So we're now it is definitely time to start looking at ETH again. Not just yet. Let's see this four hour time frame. It's just grinding down there. I want to see one more solid push down and climax for a bounce like we saw back here with this climax back on, let's see, six days ago, March 18th. So the daily chart definitely should have us watching this setup. And this weekly chart too, we're still going to form a higher low compared to two, three, which we came from. We're still at six right now. So I'm glad I decided to pull this chart up because that daily RSI does tell me time to start paying attention to Ethereum again. And we'll see if Ethereum can play catch up a little bit if we do get some continuation on the daily. So went over the range that we're looking for into overnight. For Ethereum, let's move on to Litecoin. And you can tell how quick I can do Ethereum and Litecoin analysis because I just did all the Bitcoin analysis. And it's pretty much the exact same minus some little subtle differences. So ETH is a little bit weaker and then LTC fluctuates whether it's stronger or weaker. But other than that, the candlesticks and the shapes and the, the patterns are majority the same. So the support on the daily, the higher low for Litecoin is 157.06. Resistance is 175.50. Looking at the four hour time frame, we have our higher low established that the bulls ideally want to hold. That's down at 161.40 with resistance of 169.50. That's the range to be watching overnight. There's a wide range there. So a lot of space. And we could see Bitcoin break its range I highlighted and then Ethereum break and Litecoin could still not even break just because of how much space there is in between this range right now. So overall, the bulls are trying to shift this momentum back on the daily here. Let's check back on that daily. Not as significant a follow through yet. We wanted to see some solid confirmation of the candlestick yesterday and some follow through. And we look at, at Bitcoin and compare it to Bitcoin. Definitely a stronger daily candlestick where it's green. And it's, you know, if we could get a move over 9,000 tonight, we will be getting that follow through. We're just lagging a little bit on Litecoin in the sense that we're still pretty solid red and not up at the high of yesterday like we are for Bitcoin. So again, just some subtle differences, but overall the same setup with the daily higher low and now trying for continuation. And again, this continuation in the next three days, I'd say is pretty important because if we don't get this continuation to a higher high on this bounce, it is going to shift this weekly equilibrium pattern setting up on both Bitcoin and Litecoin. It's going to shift that to significantly favor the bears. We have to see some more follow through to get right back in the middle of that equilibrium pattern to keep it nice and consistent and tight. Because if we don't make this bounce to form another lower high, 
then the bears will have significant favor so that's where we stand and the three next three days are pretty important because unless we trade straight sideways we're going to break the daily higher low now or the high of the bounce one of those levels should break in the next few days so let's check in on bnb now look at that move daily time frame exploding to the upside on increasing bull volume rsi was up at 80 at the top of this candlestick we're definitely in consolidation mode right now so on the four hour time frame we can see we're just starting to pull back we pull back very significantly a really nice short where we've already pulled back 10 percent from the top but obviously the bulls making the most on the way up here was a nice inside bar on the four hour time frame and as soon as that broke 1364 next thing you know six hours later that's a very solid 20 percent plus move so that was just a little sideways consolidation and look at this four hour time frame inside bar inside bar bull break so i know if i look at the hourly it's going to be a real nice equilibrium pattern that broke and it was our high low lower high higher low four hour let's see four hour inside bar broke bullish and then the or the hourly inside bar broke bullish and then the four hour did and look at the volume just pour on once that sideways trading said nope bulls aren't done yet so now we're pulling back volume climax on the hourly time frame signaled the top candlestick and the 15 minute time frame volume was definitely getting real heavy at the top the most bullish volume followed right after by the most selling volume is why we get those climaxes at tops and bottoms so we're in pull pullback mode we will look for a higher low to form on the hourly time frame we could start to look for an entry and start scaling in in the low 15s here low 14s just looking for a short-term trade because hourly equilibrium is more likely than not where we get a support level established and then a bounce and a lower high perhaps in the mid 15s but really nice chart breaking out nice to see certainly a, a welcome sign in crypto land even if you're not profiting from it to see a chart do that and say all right there are still bulls sticking around and there is still money to be made in a big way just got to be patient and wait for that opportunity so that's where we stand going to sign it off here with a little do good things clip i just recorded and i'll see you all tomorrow so for today's do good things ending want to talk a little bit about when i worked on a full-time organic startup farm back in maine this was about five years ago and just had an incredible experience and that guy that i was just working on the goat or the uh, cow ramp with is someone that grew up on the farm that I was living on and he lived down the road at that time. So it was the kind of thing where I could go into the outhouse out back and see something that he wrote on the wall when he was 11 years old, two decades ago. But that guy works harder than anybody I've ever met in my entire life. And it's something that we need to keep reminding ourselves. We click buttons to make money, yet there are people in this world with different trades that are working way harder than we are and they're getting compensated way less than us. So for a person like him, he just is not really good managing finances. That doesn't mean he's not a good person. He has done an incredible job with his emotional and psychology in terms of his well-being. A lot of people in his position right there, there he is, would be down the path of heroin or alcohol right now. And a lot of people surrounding him have gone down that path. He has a, uh, at that time, he had a two-year-old son and was doing everything he could. He was in trouble with the IRS. He was just, you know, he was doing everything he could to stay ahead of the game and he was falling behind financially. And that doesn't have anything to do with how good of a soul he was and how he just wanted to do good things with everybody. So I worked hard with him. You know, a day that comes to mind was waking up at 5 a.m. to plant thousands of pounds of potatoes and being done at 9 p.m. that night after an hour lunch break. So 16 hour days and just uh, working, breaking my back with him. There's a little lunch break with the, the sheep there. But the point is, I'm going to find this guy. I haven't seen him in five years. I'm gonna track him down and give him some money and just make his week allow him to be able to feed his kid with some better quality food or whatever he wants to use it for just something like that where if i can click a button button and make an amount of money that for him would be you know month changing that's very powerful to be able to share that so just wanted to to go into a little bit more detail with my do good things today and this just came to me today as i thought about him and i'm going to now get on tracking him down so Thanks for always is watching and we will see you tomorrow.